Since ancient times, humans have believed in the existence of some beings from other dimensions. Furthermore, they have written the specifications of these beings into books. The point, which is overlooked by everyone is that these invisible beings share the same features even across different cultures in the world. Through the ages, these creatures have been called many different names such as spirit, ghost, fairy, goblin, incubus and so on. In our modern understanding, these creatures are mostly called aliens. However, these beings are actually one and not different, for they all share the same features, as we are going to see. In the Quran, only jinn are mentioned as beings who resemble humans but live in a higher dimension. According to Quran, the only intelligent creatures are jinns alongside human beings. In order to understand the story as a whole, first we must observe and summarize the relationship between jinns and humans throughout history. Because as you will see in this documentary series, all these historical facts are in accordance with the information written in the Holy Quran. As you will see, the history of the relationship between jinns and humans in the Quran is supported by declarations, information and evidence, gathered from different places. Among the writings and books reaching our day, this subject is summarized and told best, in Quran. In other words, the Creator has told the relationship of jinns and humans, in order to warn human beings for the last time and encourage them to profit from history. Jinns, also known as aliens, have been created before human beings. After the creation of human beings, the jinns have been sent to another dimension. That is the reason, why some of the jinns developed a grudge against humans, who have ended their reign over the world, and as a result, they have been named as Satan or Devil. And these devils try to ruin this created order for humans as much as they can. We are going to explain these in the later parts with historical facts. See those birds? At some point, a program was written to govern them. A program was written to watch over the trees and the wind, sunrise and sunset. There are programs running all over the place. The ones doing their job, doing what they were meant to do, are invisible. You'd never even know they were here. But the other ones, well, you hear about them all the time. I've never heard of them. Of course you have. Every time you've heard someone say they saw a ghost or an angel. Every story you've ever heard about vampires, werewolves, or aliens is the system assimilating some program that's doing something they're not supposed to be doing. Programs hacking programs? Why? Well, they have their reasons, but usually a program chooses exile when it faces deletion. And why would a program be deleted? Maybe it breaks down. Maybe a better program is created to replace it. Happens all the time. In the previous episode, we mentioned that the third dimension, which we are into, is composed of atoms that are almost completely hollow inside, and that the unobservable subatomic particles, inside of these atoms, build the fourth dimension. We also presented various concrete evidence of the existence of metaphysical beings, alongside, we also mentioned that scientists also argue that there can be fourth dimensional beings and that their features are just the same as the creatures we call jinns. Again, it was told by some scientists that the creatures that we accept as aliens, but actually the same as jinns, are living in the fourth dimension. One of the first British astronauts who went to space, Helen Sharman, has stated that the aliens are in fact living in the fourth dimension and they can see us, while we human beings cannot see them. Again, a beloved American ufologist John Kell, believed in the later stages of his life that aliens surely exist and it is futile to look for them on other planets, because they are in fact here with us, just in another dimension that we cannot comprehend. Also, as you will see in this episode, people who have been on an astral journey and passed into the fourth dimension have told, they have seen creatures, always in the same fashion. The more we observe, the more we can find evidence on this subject. In this episode, we are going to show you the common features of jinns and aliens and we are going to tell you that they are in fact the same species. We have gathered and organized these data from the statements of different people from different and not related parts of the world, who have been in contact with fourth dimensional beings. As you will see, phenomenally, people from every part of the world have told the same stories about these beings. Of course, 
These collective narrations which are far from being coincidental, can be shown as proof of this truth. In the light of the information given in this episode you will understand how aliens actually shape our world and how they contribute to some serious psychological illnesses. Along with it, you will also have a better understanding of how these jinns have created polytheistic religions in the past, and what kind of malicious acts they have been participating in using masons. We welcome you to this new episode of our documentary series, which will help you to understand and take measures against the ones who have been trying to establish a new world order, plotting against humanity and laying traps, taking orders and help from Satan himself by sorcery. Hoping you are ready, let's move on with our new episode. Before we start there is a point that you should never forget, jinns, in other words, aliens are completely in harmony with quantum physics as told in our last episode. In order to understand, the actions of jinns who may appear as holograms and in any form they want, who can have a biological body when they shift to the third dimension, who can affect our feelings and thoughts, who can appear small or big at times, and who has many other capabilities, you should have fully understood the quantum physics or fourth dimension. That way you can comprehend realities that seem inconceivable to our minds and in our dimensions. If you still find this unbelievable, you might remember that thoughts shape invisible electrons, or that the incredible internet and computer technology are also fourth dimensional innovations. What are they, spacemen? Interdimensional beings in point of fact. First of all, let's talk about the belief in jinn beliefs all over the world. Historical sources indicate that almost all cultures that have ever lived have believed in jinn. In some cultures, it was known that jinns were the same as gods. In some cultures, it was thought that jinns were inferior to gods, but ultimately all cultures had the belief of jinn. The pre-Islamic Arabs also believed that jinn lived in tribes and groups, that they fought each other, and that storms and similar natural phenomena were caused by jinn. In Greek mythology, Expressions similar to the word jinn and the word daimon were used for superhuman beings. The Greeks began to believe that some of the demons could be evil in the Hellenistic and Roman times. In ancient Rome, the word genius sometimes meant the soul and sometimes the dead. It was later used as a concept believed to protect a home or similar space. The Chinese understanding of kuei, jin and shen, spirits in a broader sense encompass the whole realm of the invisible. In Indians, Buddhas are jinn and ghouls who are generally believed to be found in places where the dead are cremated. Zarathustra also considered Iran's deities called Deva as jinn. According to the Mesopotamians, nature is full of spirits, jinn and devils. It was believed that every house has a protective genie of spirit. Jinn by the Babylonians, field genes are grouped as cemetery genes. Egyptians did not give special names to evil spirits or jinn and accepted them as gods in general. There are not many different beliefs on the African continent. Under the command of Ehrlich, who was the prince of the underworld in ancient Turks, there were evil spirits called Black Nama or Yak, which means devil in Uyghur, and they did all kinds of evil and inflicted diseases on both people and animals. Also known as elves in Germanic culture, Rusakas in Slavic culture, Narakas in Hinduism, Mara in Buddhism, and Oni and Tengu in ancient Japan, demons have taken their place in many ancient religions and beliefs. It is seen that the narratives about the jinn in the religious literature of the Jews after the Babylon exile increased. In the scriptures, apocryphal works and folk legends, especially in the mystical tradition called Kabbalah shapeless and shadow-like jinn are depicted together with many prominent jinns whose names have special tasks. These jinns were half angelic, half-human beings who lived in desolate places and showed their prowess at night. The jinn belief in Islam and the jinn belief in Christianity are almost exactly the same. In Christianity, the unbelievers of the jinn are evil creatures serving the devil. They were spirits whose basis consisted of steam or flame, which could be perceived by our senses as animals in general. They could influence people and people would take various measures to protect themselves from their harm. Again ancient sorcerers used meaningless words and words in their magic formulas, which are thought to be jinn names like today. Jinns are spoken just like today, with specific names and certain identifications. 
goes by different names in different cultures. Asians believe it's evil ancestral ghosts. Arabs call it the jinn. In Old English, she was known as the mare, which is where we get... Nightmares. This all just seems like superstition, right? Yeah, but then how do you explain what happened to you the night Beth died? How do you explain what happened tonight? As can be seen, metaphysical entities, that is, jinns, are mentioned in all cultures. You can say, come on, they talk about other beings. How do you know that the concept of jinn is mentioned in all of them? We understand from these common points that in all cultures and mythologies, the same being called jinn is mentioned. 1. In most cultures, a word similar to the word jinn is used. 2. In all beliefs, it is mentioned that the jinns are creatures living like human beings, who can eat and drink, but in another dimension, and jinns can affect our dimension, or be visible only if an occurrence happens such as sorcery that can influence the dimensions. 3. In all cultures, jinn are said to have the same lifestyle, live in the same places and can take the form of various animals or humans. 4. Again, in all beliefs, the same magic methods can be used to communicate with the jinn, to make invitations and requests. 5. The pictures, idols and symbols depicted as jinn in all beliefs resemble each other. You will see proof of this in the following chapters while investigating the gods of polytheistic religions. 6. As we will explain in the following chapters, in the places where jinn are called gods, what they want from people, what they do, and their attitude towards people are all the same. Therefore, we understand that the beings called jinn are the same beings in all cultures. The point we have to make clear when describing what they look like is that the jinns are actually aliens because all the features that depict jinns and aliens are the same, so they are common in the concrete evidence that we are going to show for both. So from now on, when we say jinn, we'll also mean aliens. As a matter of fact, that the fiends, or devils are jinns is mentioned in Islam. Satan is disguised as a serpent and the Satan is a breed of this species, we call jinns. In this regard, we will include witness statements as well as concrete evidence, because witness statements are auxiliary evidence. Uzaylılar aslında cinler mi? Şimdi uzaylı şeklinde görünenler cinlerdir. Reptilyanların ifrit ırkına mensup olabileceğini düşünüyor musunuz? Çünkü birlikte yaptığımız programda ben hatırlıyorum siz reptilyanları tarif ederken biz de ifritleri tarif etmiştik. Tarifler aynı birebir birbirine uyuyordu. Yani evet ifritlerle reptilyanların aynı ırktan olma ihtimalleri yüksek. Fakat tabii ki ben bir ifrit uzmanı değilim. Siz var mıydınız o programda bilmiyorum. Vardım. Komutan Aştar, ben bunu araştırdım, Aştar'ı araştırdım ve bir Mezopotamya cini aslında. According to the statements of ufologists, aliens are divided into two genera. These are the snake-like species called reptilian or draco and the species called greys. According to the heavenly religions, the demon who is the leader of the jinns is in the form of a snake. Jinns that are not descended from demons are the kind we know as normal aliens, called greys. We see that the snake-like species with winged horns, called Draco or Reptilian is depicted as the head of the general of polytheistic religions, while the type called greys is portrayed more as an auxiliary extra on a more passive level. Under the title of these two species, there exists many different kinds and breeds, just as we humans have different races. As a matter of fact, in a book allegedly belonging to a Russian agent, many alien derivatives are mentioned with pictures, and it is explained which planets they live on and what their ambitions on Earth are. Even in this book, it is written that some of the aliens are the same as the jinn in Islamic belief. However, in the rest of the article, it is written that this race called jinn did not come to the world again. Devils who provided information for these books to be written, of course, put their own lies, between the lines. Çiftleri çoğunluğu normal düzeydeki cin. Ama bir ifrit demek onlarla binmeyen iki dön kafayı. Biz sıradan insan diyoruz ya sıradan vatandaş evet, diyoruz. Sıra... O da Erbat'a sıradan bir cin oluyor. Erbat sıradan bir cin. Tamam, Genelde tamam, tamam. insanların ev kapı önleri de yaşayan. Let us now give the material evidence that aliens and demons are the same entities, respectively. Research on some paranormal phenomena is tried to be handled by research centers with various scientific methods. Photographs of images that introduce themselves as aliens can be taken. In the same way, it has been possible to take photographs of real souls. Some spectroscopic examinations of these images, 
which have not been proven to be fake, have also been carried out. The interesting thing is that the spectral analysis of both species yields the same result. It is reported that the so-called spirits who came to the table of spiritualists and the spectral analyses of the so-called aliens based on Polaroid films, infrared and normal rays are exactly the same. In this way, it is understood that those who present themselves as spirits and those who present themselves as aliens are actually demons. None would take measures against what is unknown and that is why Jin's wishes to remain a cult. As the founder of Inkalap Publishing in Turkey Garbus Fikri states, seeing jinns by means of sorcery, changes in time and reflected first as seeing spirits and then seeing aliens. Another example is the Golden Age Book of Knowledge, which consists of alien revelations. The purpose of this book seems to be to prepare people for an impending invasion of evil aliens and to introduce jinns as friends and gods, as in the old polytheistic religions. In this book it is written, Jinns are bad in Islam, but jinns will save you. And on another page, it is written that jinns are messengers from God, and they are supreme and powerful in every aspect, and you call them aliens. Another very important subject, which should be urged upon, and which we are going to see evidence of in this documentary series is that the whole ambition of demons is to deceive humans. As it is told in all religions, because Satan lost everything he had because of Adam and Eve, he then devoted himself to the evil of human beings out of jealousy and hatred. He lost everything he had because of human beings. The answer to the question, why do demons introduce themselves as aliens, should be sought for this purpose. Because being known like that is in the interest of the jinn. It makes more sense for demons to present themselves as powerful and benevolent aliens rather than portraying themselves as evils and demons. They can deceive people much better in this way, however, Demons have bigger plans that they execute over the alien lie, which we will explain in the following chapters. One proof that both aliens and jinn are the same beings is that they both live in the upper dimension. In the previous chapters, we have mentioned scientists who claim that there can be fourth dimensional beings. So, it is in accordance with the physics, that the jinns can be in the fourth dimension. As we will see in detail in the following chapters, Religious and historical records narrate the event with a common discourse as follows. Jinns were sent to another dimension after Noah's flood. They are invisible to human eyes. But the jinn are still in this world and their effects are relatively felt. These descriptions scientifically describe being transported to the upper dimension in the quantum realm. Experts of metaphysics and occultism who are working on this subject, validate this approach. Historical records and evidence show that the jinn lived in the same dimension as humans until the time of Prophet Noah and that this jinn moved to the upper dimension after the flood. We will show this evidence in the section on the Mu continent. If they had believed in Allah and went on the right way, we would surely have bestowed on them water in abundance. This verse shows that the jinn once lived like biological beings like humans and was in need of water. Wherein both will be chaste female wives, restraining their glances, desiring none except their husbands with whom no man or jinni has had sexual intercourse before them. In this verse, the word tams is used, which means the breakdown of celibacy. In other words, according to this verse, it is clearly understood that the jinn can somehow become the size of humans and have sexual intercourse with human women, that is, they can live in our dimension just like us when the conditions are met. You will see other evidence of this in the statements of numerous women abducted by aliens. Now we are going to give you the information about this subject as told by the Prophet Muhammad. The written information about the Prophet Muhammad that has survived to the present day is called Hadith. Hadiths were recorded after very strict controls. In this Hadith, it is indicated that when jinns shift into our dimension, they became just like us and they can be tied. Prophet Muhammad once stated that, if not for the promise Allah, God, made to Satan, he would have tied up Satan who has came to disturb him in a physical form, and would leave him there until judgment day. O children of Adam, let not Shaitan deceive you as he got your parents out of paradise, stripping them of their raiments to show them their private parts. Verily he and his soldiers see you from where you cannot see them. 
Verily, we made the shayateen protectors and helpers for those who believe not. In this verse, it is clearly explained that the jinn is in a different dimension from us, but they see us and establish relationships with people like friends even though we cannot see them. And the jinn, we created aforetime from the smokeless flame of fire. In this verse, it is understood that the genes can penetrate people's bodies when the necessary conditions are met. We have indicated the explanation in the second chapter, which says jinns who are made of subatomic particles can easily come in and out of the empty spaces of humans who are made out of atoms that are hollow on the inside. So these verses and hadiths are in harmony with quantum physics. In this personal growth documentary called The Phase many witnesses who have been on an astral journey stated that they have seen aliens, who are in another dimension, yet still in our world. The phase is an umbrella term that encompasses all hybrid states in which the brain's centers of consciousness are active during rapid eye movement or REM sleep, which is when people dream. In terms of sensation, the phase is like an out-of-body experience or becoming conscious while dreaming. Meanwhile, sensations can be more intense than physical ones, and you can't feel your real body on your bed. Michael Raduga began intensely studying the phase phenomenon at age 16. In 2007, he opened the OOBE Research Center in order to study the phase and conduct mass experiments with groups of people. This experience I gained, I suddenly began to notice odd coincidences. For example, the phase is practiced when falling asleep or awakening. Nearly all close encounters of the third kind with extraterrestrial civilizations and alien abductions take place at those very times, and the very same sensations are described. On October 7, 2011 in Los Angeles, the OOBE Research Center brought together volunteers to artificially reproduce close encounters of the third kind, that is, alien abduction. We simply took a group of people, told them how to enter the phase, and asked them to find aliens in it. As a result of the experiment, 7 out of 20 volunteers were able to come into personal or visual contact with extraterrestrials. Experiment participant Alexander N. I woke up and made an attempt to enter the phase, and it worked. I got up from my body in my own room. Not wanting to waste any more time, I tried to find aliens. Three of them materialized right before my eyes. They seemed like creatures from the movie The Thing. Experiment participant, Craig P. Upon awakening, I decided to separate from my body in the first five seconds. I found myself in a forest clearing. There was a flying saucer in the clearing. Two aliens were near the flying saucer. The next thing I remember was lying on the grass near the flying saucer and that there were people that looked like children in a circle around me. Similarly, Muslim scholars have also stated, on many occasions, that they have come across jinns on the astral journeys they have been in. In fact, all of us have been experiencing the state of an astral journey every day and have been passing into fourth dimension. We all go through a state of sleep and wakefulness. This realm where our souls pass between sleep and wakefulness is called the Yakaza realm. Paranormal events that happen to us usually occur in this state between sleep and wakefulness. For instance, having a nightmare as an incubus or heaviness is an event happening to everyone in every part of the world, and it happens in a state between sleep and wakefulness. Similarly, being kidnapped by aliens is an event that happens just in that state which is called Yakaza. This resemblance is proof that jinns are the same as aliens. Kazama, 
karanlıkta pusuda bekleyen cinlerdir. The most important question is how jinn shift into our dimension and if they do what kind of evidence can be shown supporting that. Jinns, as they can influence the feelings and thoughts of humans in their own dimension when they shift into ours under the needed circumstances, can affect us physically. Some of the most credible examples of jinn's magnetic and physical existence are the places that are accepted as haunted and where various paranormal activities occur regularly. So much so that, people are still afraid to step into these places because of ghosts and spirits we have already told you that. These things referred to as ghosts and spirits are actually jinn's according to Islamic belief. It has been understood that these images, which are reflected on cameras in many parts of the world, are not fake in laboratory studies, but no explanation has been made by the scientific community. In order to be able to fully comprehend the subject of jinn's shifting across dimensions that we are going to talk about now, you must remember the explanations on dimensions and quantum physics which we talked about in the second chapter. In other words, the fact that aliens can change dimensions when necessary is in accordance with scientific facts and quantum physics. The images of these greys and reptilians that we see and know as aliens and reptilians in every culture are the original images of the jinns. When the jinns slowed down in our dimension, they appear in their original form. In order for jinns to cross over to our dimension, either a magnetic event must occur in our realm or a magnetic effect must be created by a spell. When the magnetic opening occurs as a result of these effects, it is enough for the jinns to slow down to pass into our dimension. They can slow down and pass into our dimension as a biological being just like us. However, because they have been created out of fire elements when they die, their bodies ignite and they vanish as ashes, and a smell of sulfur can be observed. Yet, ultimately they do not wish to pass into our dimension as biological beings. Because when they pass biologically it is very easy for them to die in our dimension, and they cannot behave as comfortable and strong as their own dimensions because of their fluid loss. Even if they pass, they are more common in desolate places. Just as we go to space but cannot move freely, have difficulty and want to return home to the world, and even people who manage to move to the upper dimension through astral travel cannot stay there constantly and feel the desire to return to their homeland, likewise, the jinns cannot stay in our dimension and do not want to stay. Şimdi bunların bizim gibi fiziki bedenleri yok. Şimdi var, kavga var. etsen, ay bizim gibi değil. Bizim var. gibi değil. Bizim gibi değil. Bizden farklı. Aynen, Şöyle bizim masaya vurduğun ses çıkar mı? Tak tak diye ses. Evet. Aynen, aynen, aynen öyle. Tabii. E o zaman neyi görebiliyorsun? Şimdi e iki kişi kavga eder. Bak şimdi mesela bir tane daha deli işte sana. Hı -hı. Ey sekaleyin diyor. Sekaleyin. Sekaleyini bütün İslam alimleri cinler ve insanlar diye çevirmiş. Se evet. Sekaleyin ne demek biliyor musun? Siklet ağırlık. Ağırlık. Ağırlığa sahip olan. Evet. Ağırlığa sahip olması, bir parçacığın ağırlığa sahip olması kütlesi olması demektir. Mesela bana çok arkadaşlarımız anlatır, derelerden aşağıya, bizim köylerden aşağı inerken arkadan taşlanırlar, taş atarlar. Şimdi bunu dinleyenler, bak şunu diyecekler, evet bizim köyde bu oldu, annem de oldu, dayım da oldu, ben de oldu. Jins who can appear in various different forms in our eyes, such as animals and ghosts according to the Prophet Muhammad sayings, hadiths, are the wizards of the jinn realm. If their appearances are physical and real, or holographic and deceiving should be discussed even by Islamic mentors. According to quantum physics, both can be true. However, the truth is, when they appear that way, they can be easily killed by people with good spirituality. If you have a bad spiritual, negative body aura and therefore your chakras are vulnerable to magnetic attacks, the genie will be strong against you, and you will be weak against it. Again. When they take on such different images, they appear to you terrifying or unafraid to you, depending on your spiritual situation. For example, a jinn who appears simultaneously to people who have polluted their hearts, mind and soul with sins and to people who have done no evil, appears as a dragon to a person who is spiritually impure, while to a person who is spiritually strong, he appears as a small snake and cannot frighten him. In this case, as it will again be understood, it is related to the quantum. What do you look like? It depends on who's looking. So depending on your situation in the quantum realm, the jinns either feed on you by haunting you or they do not approach you, fearing your energy. Another similarity that we are going to present about jinns and aliens is that both have leaders from the reptilian species. Just now we have all seen that the leaders of aliens are formed from a snake-like species, which are dracos. First of all, 
The scientific evidence that we can show about aliens in the form of snakes is magic. First, it is a fact that, since ancient times, wizard priests have been seeing snake-like gods, in every part of the world. Confronting snake-like gods is a common phenomenon that is told in polytheistic religions everywhere in the world. Second, it is being discussed by many people nowadays, that magic and sorcery are related to quantum physics. Alongside, in our fifth episode, The Black Box of the World we are going to discuss how fourth dimensional beings are get in touch with people and get help by sorcery and magic. Also, we are going to show you, how wizard priests of today's world and ancient polytheistic priests witnessed fourth dimensional beings which are in the form of snakes, in the later episodes. Again, you will see in the seventh episode that the snake gods appear in every culture including all pagan cultures. We have already explained that the leader team of the aliens is snake-shaped. The serpent draco dragon reptile race, has the same meanings in history and mythology. These words are all used to mean the same thing. There are countless legends and mythologies about dragons in every culture all over the world. We will present you the historical records proving that these aliens really existed behind these legends in the following chapters. To give an example that is known to everyone, the whole world has known the reptilian creature called reptilian for centuries in the Americas, and many people on the continent say they have seen this creature for hundreds of years. There are countless people abducted by aliens today, and countless statements of these people have been reflected in books, documentaries, movies, and websites. When these people were connected to the polygraph machine, it was understood that they were not lying, and everyone who was abducted told the same things. There were grey aliens in the place where they were abducted, and there was a larger reptilian alien giving them orders, and some witnesses even said that there were people in uniform serving them. This fact is an evidence of the Freemasons' connection with the aliens. Now let's see how the heavenly religions depict demons. All of the heavenly religions say that demons are like serpents. As a matter of fact, polytheistic religions say that their gods look like snakes, and we will delve into that in the later episodes. In general, in the stories in the holy books, the devil who ensures the expulsion of man from heaven is a snake walking on two legs. According to Jews, the devil is most often disguised as a snake. In the Torah, it is the serpent that deceived Adam and Eve and got them expelled from paradise. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. The book of Yasser, one of the lost books mentioned in the Torah, mentions Nimrod, the founder of the Masonic religion, and a race of snakes that had a say in the creation of humanity. Again, Pioneers who have been on the road to spreading Christianity named the city of Bergama the center of devil worshipping, which is full of snake symbols. According to the Bible, the devil is in the form of a snake. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth. Then I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Prophet Muhammad has also stated on various occasions that jinns look like snakes. In one of them he says, a certain kind of jinn looks like snake and scorpion. At another time Prophet Muhammad said, the snakes which you find in your house can be jinns. Similarly, it was told by Prophet Muhammad to his friends that one time, a snake he came across on the way had whispered in his ear and wanted something from him. In another incident, friends of Prophet Muhammad saw two snakes fighting and later learned that these snakes were actually jinns. Many Islam scholars state according to their experience, jinns are in the shape of snakes. In a certain event, it is told that a snake that regularly attends to listen to Islamic lectures, according to an Islamic scholar is a jinn. Again, as transmitted from ancient texts, there have been soldiers who came across a jinn in the form of a dragon. In another circumstance, it is told that a serpent in the form of a dragon has been fired by the Holy Quran. From all these accounts, it is understood that a certain breed of jinns looks like snakes. So a breed of jinns is known as reptilian aliens or snake aliens. The reason why these beings of fourth dimension, 
are seen as little snakes and as big dragons at times, is surely related to quantum physics. Çakrası açık olan her geçtiğinleri görür. Çakrası açık derken nasıl çakrası? Yani görür? çakralar vardı. İnsanlarda çak, içgüdüler vardı. Çakralar vardı. Altın hislerin daha ilerisidir. Nasıl bir suretteler? Şimdi bunların çoğusu Müslüman olanları hep böyle alim, işte tagallı, şüpheli ve işte güvercin bu kılıklarda gezerler. Kafir olanların tamamı da ya siyah yılandır, yani hissedersiniz. Ya vahşi bir insana benzer, dişleri çıkmış. Yani derler ya işte şöyle kafası vardı, yedi kafası vardı, böyle vardı. Çok canavara benzeyen şey olur ama ekseretli, böyle yılan, siyan, akrep, bu tür şeyler olurdu. Daha güneyde Benin kıyısında. Vudu uygulayan başka bir köy farklı bir ayine hazırlanıyor. Burası savaş ruhu Akbıla'nın bölgesi. Akbıla, sağlayacağı koruma karşılığında çok güçlü ele geçirme ayinleri istiyor. Köyün merkezinde ruh için dikilmiş bir tapınak. Duvarları Akbıla'nın gücünü ve takipçilerinin imanını kanıtlıyor. So yes, we have narrated various common and experienced scientific facts with their religious aspects to you. We will see you on our next episode in which we will bring you many truths which affect your life about another species of jinns known as grey aliens. May the truth be with you, take care.